Yeah, she was like, yeah, so good. Like, Wait, our Sven's dead. What happened? The best thing is if the Io can, because uh, he moves the same speed. If he can keep walking within the river, for example, mm -hmm. he can follow the, the the river chaser. So if he times it and he can run around a little bit, mm -hmm. obviously high ground, low ground, it will cancel. But if he does it, he can get across a little bit of the map. Okay. So that's our dual lane, Spearbreaker, Darkseer, um, which is actually offensively very strong. So now the last pick is what is the what is the carry that's going to pair with the Io? They apparently. They don't care. They don't want it to get countered, I guess. They do not get the last pick, so we'll see it shortly. My only thought right now is the secret could potentially just pick an Arc Warden, and then it allows... Uh, Alliance has the good team fight. Their high ground's a little bit weak. Obviously, if, if Sven doesn't have God Strength up and they take these fights outside, secret can just play really aggressive, then the, the uh, Arc Warden can just kind of enable the late game, and also has a very good presence in mid game, especially when these three heroes right now, Lena, Willow, and AA, all would blow up to any partially farmed Dark Warden. I'm really unsure what hero it's going to be. Staying away from somebody that has a lot of heals is maybe recommended. You definitely want a BKB carrier. Mm -hmm. um, Five seconds remaining. You could do something kind of like, but you kind of want an Ags hero, preferably. I was thinking like Lifestealer, maybe. They could also go maybe go for some like Ursa type hero. And just go full aggressive, but... Like Ursa or PA or something, maybe? Because mm -hmm. then the TA at least will go Deso, and then you have the high ground ability. You then have the aggression where the Io can pair with the Ursa. You, you've you got the, the Surge to save you. I think there's like there's two options. You have just you all in on, on the fight, and your TA is kind of your mid-game kind of secure. Or you then pick a hero to secure a late game like the Arc Warden. It just... The, the conventional heroes right now that I think Nisha plays, they don't look too good. Like, the Morphling doesn't look good. Troll doesn't look... Troll actually could be okay. Terrorblade. I just think with the Lena and True. and the fact that you got your, like, uh, Barra in your lane, it's not that good. Sure. Okay. Well then, uh, Spectre for the final pick for Team Secret. Uh, she makes a, She can do the single target haunt. Mm, yes. Which is not bad at all. That's global. I, I like the fact that Secret Spectre here that allows them to not be on a timer. I think that, that's the that's the key thing. They've got the aggression and they can still secure this, but I think Alliance has already shown that they're going to be in this aggro tri lane. I don't know how strong the IO plus Spectre lane will be against this tri lane. I think there will be a lot of deaths on Secret side. And I think if Alliance can actually move out the laning phase and then p pick a hero right now that can maybe hit some buildings, then I think they're in a really good spot. Or, or instead of hit buildings, just Make it un impossible <laughs> for them to fight them. Well, that's, better, that's really. going yeah. against their religion as well, by the way. Their religion of... They, they used to be called No Tight Hunter. Oh, that's true. Oh, that's a throwback. Against, against their religion. <laughs> Load is going to have a fit backstage. Uh, anyway, now uh, jokes aside. Tight Hunter wraps up the draft for Alliance. Uh, secret with a Spectre pick at the end. Um, which, which one do you favor? I mean, Alliance is really good team fight compared to Secret's. Doesn't but... it? But uh, Haunt's not bad either. Spectre is definitely going to be able to like punish and dive on AA often. If he doesn't get initiated on, it's going to be for the best. And they have a tool to disrupt, which is the, the Spear Breaker. So I think Puppy is the sacrificial lamb while they try to kill the back line, and then they can win fights. Mm. The crucial component in this uh, game right now is if the TA has a good game, and get the early blink and Deso, then Alliance should be scared. Three of the heroes will just blow up to this TA. So I think focusing on the mid lane, shutting down mid one, and then collapsing around the rest of the map is the game plan, I think. Okay, time to head over to our commentary team then as we get ready for game number one in series number two to decide all the marbles in Group B. We start off seeing only the worst for Alliance as they had that terrible 0-4 day one. Then we saw the good of Alliance, where they managed to very convincingly take down LGD. Unfortunately, that day two also ended up with them going 0-2 against Evil Geniuses. So here, backs against the wall, they need to be able to prove that they can take down the Giants in Team Secret. Uh, a, a team that has been dominating the DPC season, even if they haven't quite dominated their group at this event. I just saw Nisha wear a Los Angeles, California jacket. Now I have to be biased towards. Mm. I'm from LA. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Rough. 
Well, it looks like I know who I've chosen. <laughs> All in on Nisha, huh? All in on Nisha. I don't care about you other fools. Uh, no, I, I mean, personally, Alliance is like a... I said it in the pregame thing, and I said it yesterday. They're, they're just like, they're this really frustrating team. Yeah. Because you want to support them more, and you want to go all in. Yeah. But you know you can't. You know you, you just can't. Can. You can't go all in on. <laughs> you just, you want to you wanna tell yourself like, oh man, Alliance is bad. Their, their series against LGD, if they played like that all the time, they would be... They'd be like nigh undefeated at this tournament, unless you're like, uh, unless you're like uh, a masochist. Like, when it comes to fans and like cheering for a team, you want to be able to support a team that at least makes the playoffs, you know. Mm -hmm. And you just can't do that consistently. What with is it in Alliance. hockey? Like a Leafs fan or something? I, I don't know. Oh, the yeah. Maple Trent's, Leafs. Trent's a Leafs. Leafs. Yeah. What's fan. that? What's that? I don't know what the. I don't know what the. An Arsenal fan. I don't know what the. I assume you guys don't follow <laughs> basketball, so you won't know. But if you follow basketball, I'd imagine it's like akin to being a Knicks fan. Mm. Like every year, you know, you've got Porzingis. Nope. There's just something about I, I'm not sure, but I do. I do always have like I have I have hope in teams like this. These are my personal favorite teams. You know, yeah. the scrappy teams that stick yeah. together. Yeah. That uh, that don't really change roster. You know, like they, it's a they story got on, that you can really get by. Yeah, they got unlucky right? because uh, of the two surgeries. I know a lot of people said, quote, unquote, but that's actually what happened. If a team, by the way, guys, yeah. let me just let you in on the secret. If they oftentimes, you know, it's just like uh, if they're being as specific as saying he's getting surgery. <laughs> surgery. There's no. <laughs> if they wanted to be just come shady, up with that one. Yeah, they would just say. If they said he retired. Yeah. <laughs> or is taking a break for personal reasons, then sure, you can you can, yeah, you can drum say, up some conspiracies. But, but if he's getting like, medical surgery, they're like, that's something different. If he actually has surgery, then yes, you can't avoid that. And I know Mickey has had hand problems. Uh, and he took he had to take like a three-month break from playing Dota to just get that resolved. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, it, it's almost like a reset period. Yeah. It's like, oh, we, well, we've made all this progress. Yes. Do well, it reset. And it's very cool of Madara. I, I think this was also their way of helping him out. So they scheduled Mickey, or, uh, Koikpa's surgery mm -hmm. so that Madara, who helped them qualify for all these things, would have the opportunity to play here. Which yeah. is, I think, the very it's a very cool gesture by the organization. Yeah, almost. absolutely. I think, um, <laughs> you know, we as casters, watching, like, the, the true Tier 1 teams, careful wins. They're all, they're, most of them are goddamn millionaires anyway. Like, what, what do I care if they win an extra 100,000? But, like, a, a, a an, an relatively unaccomplished team, like Alliance, it feels like a team you can't get behind. Of course. Because I, want, I want, like, the underdog team to, because inherently they were talking about it on the panel while we're having this pause. Uh -huh. uh, I inherently want underdog teams to do well. It, it is better for the ecosystem yes. of the scene for these up-and-comers to do well. So that's why I, I get so personally offended when somebody says, like, you're, you're an EG biased liquid vice. Fool, I don't want those guys to win. I don't care if my, if, uh, they're, they're all legit millionaires. They all own homes. They don't need. Our <laughs> TC's good for the rest yeah, of his like, life. You're like, you don't guys, need that boy to me, win anymore. Me telling, me, me telling on a broadcast that he's doing well is not going to change his financial <laughs> futures. Like, let me just get that out of the way. But you and, know what? And then there's all this discussion about, like, how the tier two and tier three scene isn't really represented that well, especially financially. So, like, and when you see, like, just look at the DPC points and how top-heavy that is, well, the money pretty much follows the DPC points, so... Yes. And so for a team like Alliance to do well, yeah, that'd be a cool story. Because yeah. at the end of the day, I can't help but be a fan of Dota. That is my... It's my job to, like, not be biased, sure, because I'm the English broadcaster, but, like, mm -hmm. I want the underdog to do well. Yeah. Y you want... Because, you know, you, you get invested in these teams that you see all the time that just don't quite do well enough. Mm -hmm. Oh, was it... Uh, I felt especially attached to that one team, Kingwin. Oh, with... Uh, back when they had Nisha and yeah, they had and Elisash, it was just like, and... It felt like they would get... They would do okay, yeah, and then yeah. it was just like, uh... I think Ad Finim, that's why, like, everybody was down to of back course. Ad Finim. Nobody was like, Ad Finim hater here. Well, let me just say, there's a guy... Uh, <laughs> I remember at the Boston Major, I was working as the coach of DC at the time, but I, so I would always watch from the back. Yep. So then sometimes I'd look towards the stage when they'd get on, uh -huh. and I'd always see this dude with a VP flag. And uh -huh. then as soon as I, if I remember correctly, uh, they lost or whatever, he just switched to an Ad Finum flag. <laughs> you don't deserve that. You are uh -huh. either. 
You you got to stay a true fan. Is that what you're saying? What if you've got a backup team? What if you're a Knicks fan? Surely you you got to have a backup team. I guess I guess this is like an arbitrary <laughs> silly thing because like, in my opinion, a fandom is you uh-huh. support one team. You know those guys that are that are just like obnoxious <laughs> to like the point where like you almost want to root against them. Uh-huh. I don't actually hate those guys because at the end of the day, they're gonna ride or die with their team mm-hmm. as long as they stick. So if you know, it's like if you're a Warriors fan from the beginning and now they're great, you can be as obnoxious. Oh, as shout they want. out to uh, Lyrical Gabe. Yeah, Gabe was a long time, long time fan, right? Yeah. So like, if your team is now good, gloat all you want, <laughs> yeah, be obnoxious, yeah. call everyone else trash. Like, if you're if you're a secret fan right now, do it. Call everyone else like, you know, the, the like top you were of there in the dark days of multiple TIs. Yeah. You were there where RTZ made the in and out. Yeah, the uh, you know the uh, it was always like the they go into the end of the year and you're just like oh what time is it on the calendar i saw somebody who's like ah it's made it's that time again for secret to disappoint me yeah. i saw those like self referential memes and stuff like uh-huh. that great but like in my opinion if you're a true fan of something you know just like i think it's cool anyways and i wish mm-hmm. dota was more like it i guess you can't be because the players switch around but they're doing goddamn that less players they're trying to do that change less. all the time yeah they're trying to do that less so it's now it's easy now it's time pick a team mm-hmm. all in for it what is your team? What is my team? Yeah, Out if of you're the gonna... tier two scene? Oh, Alliance. Just in general. It, Alliance is definitely tempting. I mean, we've got actually three like teams that I think from different regions you can all really support in yeah. this group, right? You've got Keen, Alliance, and Gambit, who are all definitely in that tier two category mm-hmm. and all show potential. They've all got their own interesting story. Keen's, you know, got this relatively young squad that can do a lot you've got alliance here with this story of them just kind of like sticking together even through han days like insania like having this this uh teammate in mickey for for so long you, you know you brought up the the madara stand-in thing you've got gambit with fng coming back in like there's a lot of good storylines for all three of these underdog teams and all three of them are on the border right now yeah i being i do eliminated. like i do like uh i do like gambit a lot I think, Dude, they're uh, a fun team to watch, right? Gambit might be my team now. Might have swayed me right there. But uh, regardless, we have a Titan in Dota 2 in Team Secret. And on the other hand, we have this up-and-coming team that absolutely needs these wins. They yes. will not move on without these wins. And it is very likely, as I've seen this smoke, I feel like 14 times in a row, <laughs> get countered <laughs> in the same way. So many times. Uh, we have the underdogs that absolutely need to 2-0. Yeah versus a team that I feel like wants to sort of right the ship a little bit. Yeah, and it's underdogs you can actually have hope in, not just the the sort of like, well, they're going to get 2 old, but I'm still going for them anyway. They showed they can take down top-tier teams. They showed they can play no, not, extremely good Dota in their teams. series against they've, OG. They've only gotten wins team. against a okay, team. Against a team. Against a team. Shout out to our uh, in-game team as well, JJ and Nox, for uh, providing the stats and the camera work. And shout out to you guys too, all our fans, uh, Twitch and all that jazz, you know, you meme it up, but keep it so that I'm not homeless for another day longer. As bottom lane, we have one of my favorite lanes. I think Spearbreaker Darkseer is like a classic, uh-huh. you know, like the supercharged cow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big yeah. fan of that. I mean, especially since they just made that uh, duo even stronger oh, with the surge charge combo. They're going to uh, block the camp yeah, yeah, yeah. as it comes in, or the creeps, yeah. and uh, easy farm. And hey, everybody, like, look, w- when somebody picks Darkseer and you pick Spirit Breaker, do this, please, every single time. I can't tell you the number of times I picked Darkseer because somebody had Spirit time. Breaker and then they just don't do this with me. You Cut the creep wave. Personally do it. Offended as, uh, it's good. What is Boxy? Boxy's just a little bit scared of getting dove or something. Now he's going to pop his head out. I don't out. think he should have been, considering yeah. it's two melees and he has Anchor Smash, but um, yeah. uh, opts to not actually farm that first wave out, but does get his level two, and that should prompt him to get the level of Kraken Shell. And this is something I see quite often now from Alliance, is the aggro tri-lane as mid lane. They're going to make a move onto mid one, who is copying a pretty good amount of damage. And let me say this. Lena matchup versus TA, uh-huh. uh, not the best, but not the worst. Okay. Because of her boosted attack speed, of course, she can cut through refraction charges quite quickly. Mm-hmm. But it does mean that her new caress is not as good. 
like being able to dragon slave plus one you know the two for one that we always talk about isn't really possible is insania likely to die here very fire that's gonna give him a little bit extra leeway yeah starts really cutting for it but not gonna be able to do it oh. he does cancel the healing salve of insania but gives up the first blood taiga who made the rotation shout out to him by the way he looks excellent in that lgd series both on the uh the earth spirit as well as the hero he's playing right now dark willow he was always on point with the brambles and continues to be in this game yeah absolutely i will say by the way uh the one game that we did cast of secrets it was the one where nisha uh played more the bkb mess yeah up. And that was actually like one of the few times that i think i've ever seen nisha really make like any game losing errors for team secret oh there was uh there was definitely another game uh yesterday where we actually referenced yesterday. the bkb morphling to talk about it um, i see it was the game that you guys casted uh, when yeah, they played against maybe, Keen? It was me and T Governor casting against Yeah, it was the Keen, Keen one. That's weird. Uh, maybe Nisha just... Uh, you, you have to give him the benefit of the doubt because of what he's done this season. Yeah. But... Uh, they 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 had the the Dad's troll game. I see, I see. As the courier gets sniped and Taiga already off to... Oh, Jesus. He is off to the races right now. Is He's gotten first blood for his team. Oh, oh no, that's the soaring for the Dark Seer. Is it? That you just killed his lane. Oh. You don't no. like typically you do not have enough regen to just keep going with a courier snipe like that. He's got <laughs> half his mana pool right now. He just ate a mango actually. He's done the swerve now. now. Nisha is gonna be caught here. The Bramble's actually missing there. That's gonna cost them. That would have been the kill. They needed that little bit of extra damage. Uh, I'm not actually sure if they would have yeah. gotten the kill as. The healing self regen was going to be a lot yeah. from the yeah, absorb, but... And Mikkei actually going to go down here to this gank. And this is Radiant such a strong gank. The Iron Shell attack. surged up. Puppy running at breakneck speeds cap. Yeah. Uh, even better when you cut the creep wave because the angle that you come in, you come in more behind the mid laner, pushing him into the opposing mid laner. Oh. It's just a better setup. It's also harder to see. Like, there's not a good defensive ward. And uh, the first laning phase that's going to see that angle. The charge of time two for uh, for Lina stun makes it very obnoxious. Yeah. To be able to turn rate, cast a stun with the cast animation, especially surged up. By the time you get there, you've already hit him. Uh, and it usually just leads to an easy kill like that. And I tell think you... that the Agro Trilan going to have to be careful of too. The Ion Shell and then TP over to the other side of the map. Yeah, as an in-game counter, I think Yules or uh, Lina is perfectly fine because she can go for Yules and stuff like that and just instantly stop the uh, SP charge. Mm -hmm. See, like, even right there, Mickey barely got it off, but it's because of the angle that he yeah. came in it. As uh, the Brambles just completely whiffed there. Mickey's still yeah, looking for gonna it. land, though, and mid one he is gets dead. Him. He got soloed. Spirit Breaker comes in, tries to gank, and the gank turns around very sharply. I guess Taiga's uh, Brambles allowed that, but... Kind of forced him to run to the right rather yeah. than straight back. In a way, but still. The Spectre does seem to be doing quite well, though, for a dual lane against an aggro tri lane. It's not really an aggro tri lane, though. Mm. This is the thing, right? It's yeah. uh, it's like pseudo, or as Grand Grand would say, suedo. Suedo. Uh, Taiga is sometimes up here, sometimes he's not as. First crown, trying to see if he can make sure they get this five minute bounty rune. They do manage to grab it. And thanks to the cold feet and Bramble's follow-up, they're actually going to do a lot of damage to Nisha as they escape. They're going to get uh, three of the four bounty runes. It's really cool, by the way, to see who decides to prioritize bounty runes and who doesn't. Yep. Let me tell you, Keen Gaming, they <laughs> I've never seen a team give less shits about bounty runes. Like, uh -huh. they just... It's not even a thing for them. It was like Alliance in that game one with Roshan. It was just yeah. so weird just that everyone else is doing this thing and they would not. Mikke is going to be charged on the Cursed Crown. It's not going to go off fast enough. Mid one will be able to finish up Mikke. But now is he going to be able to get out? The Cold Feet's going to root him to the spot here. Boxy actually teeping in out. from that bottom lane. Well, that's unfortunate because there is a, a big creep wave pushing into his tower. That's a lot of experience, gold, and, and even tower damage. That's Just uh, too many TPs taking a little bit too long as Insania drops the cold feet for half a second. We should talk about the rise of Sven, by the way, as a hero. I think that this hero, it's just like an all-around Mario-esque character. You uh -huh. know, like, whenever you play any video game that has Mario in it, he's just good. He's not amazing at anything. He's yes. just good at everything. He's, like, pretty good at everything. Uh, he's very tanky, he scales pretty good, he has catch as a core, 
Now with Warcry, he gives you more team fight for like your allies. Yeah. As they're gonna make the move onto top lane. Tiger's gonna TP in. Well, Nisha's a frozen great up. Charge. I mean, you're not killing Nisha. That no. is a Yapsor with seven magic stick charges and a bottle charge left over. It is so unlikely that you kill the spec. So they've got to somehow get to Yapsor, but... I always love Wisp games too, because I think that the objective is so, like, very clear. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's... You either kill the Wisp or you don't. You kill the Wisp, you can win the team fight. If you don't kill the Wisp, as Ravage looks like it was used at bottom lane under the tower, but Zai gonna just sneak out of there. He's so farmed. He has way too much HP regen. 15 a second nearly. Yeah, we looked over at him and Zai looks super healthy, but I imagine that was just the regen and even the bottle that he had. There is a rather large stack that, that was uh, actually a lion stacking for this fan. I think they did this last time against LGD as well. Yeah. I'm glad you brought up this fan though. That was something that I, I started off the show talking on the panel about. Hero has a 90% win rate, and it's not just the winning teams that were winning with it. Alliance also, the only wins they've gotten were with the uh, the Modern oh, Sven against actually LGD. Got a moderate amount of those is... That's going to be a two-man stun, follow up with the Brambles, but again, there's just too much sustain out from Yapsor. He's just going to bottle uh, Nisha, who has his own stick too. That's the deadly part, is that you essentially get two to work with, yeah. meaning that you get two different bursts. Uh, it's going to heal him like instant 1k. It's very hard to cut through that. I mean, I like the hero just because I don't think it has any real big glaring holes. It scales well. It's a pretty good rose hitter. It hits buildings nicely. It tanks for you. It's like a frontliner carry, which I think always feels good to have. You never feel bad when you're, especially when you're support. You have this like big beefy guy just kind of run in, blink in, uh, yeah. take up so much of the attention as mid lane. Mid Try to go for him, mid one. Not gonna commit here, they do have the Curse Crown on Puppy, and Puppy is gonna be the one in trouble. Charge up in two seconds time, but I'm pretty sure with the Brambles and the Laguna Blade, that'll be enough damage, four to two now. To the slight favor of Alliance, less than 1,000 net worth lead for them. Still, that's only the five position for Alliance, and... Yeah. Or, uh, on the side of Secret. Not that big of a deal if Puppy dies. Any of these, uh, TP forcing rotation Still a very minimal net worth lead from Alliance as Boxy continues to do very well in this bottom lane. If you check, he's got uh, 57 last hits, 13 denies. And what that means is that Zai, yeah, he's farming all these like mini camps and stuff like that, but all the uh, CS in lane belongs to this Tidehunter. As we see right here, uh, the difference in lane creeps. And Tide's the perfect kind of hero to get the 1v1 against Darks here, right? He can tank creeps, he's gonna be the healthy the entire time, and he's also an offlaner that needs a lot of farm. And so Darks here is locked into the position, and Tide's okay being locked in there too. Yeah, it's part of the reason why, um, if you look at, if you look at Tide's toolkit, you would glance over and think to yourself, why isn't this hero of all heroes been made into a 4 yet? Considering, mm. like, everyone's a 4. Uh, yeah. he's got, like, a big team fight ulti, he's got Gush, has a slow and stuff like that, mm -hmm. very, like, Pretty low cooldown, and the mana cost for damage is fantastic. But it's just like the way that the hero works is you do need farm. Uh, they're gonna make a move onto this Willow. Yeah, Ion Shell is doing a lot of damage to him, but the Brambles will help separate him and Puppy. Puppy now is gonna need to charge to get out of here in Alliance. No, like, without a stun. Oh, unless the LC. Wow. Beautiful setup nice there catch. for Mickey. And he's got the Laguna Blade. Not sure if he really needs to use it. He'll hold on to that big ultimate for now. Stopped him in traffic right there. But what were we talked about? Well, right now we're talking about uh, 50 most picked heroes of the previous patch. Darkseer had the sixth highest win rate, and Lena had the worst. Oof. Oh, we were talking about Tide as, as why he needs items. Oh, it's yeah. because you don't ever want to be locked into just being a Ravage bot. Yeah. That makes your hero feel incredibly worthless. You want to feel multiple anchor smashes. You want to be tanky enough that oh, your Kraken Shell has an impact. Go. But here, he is not tanky enough against the double Ion Shell with Puppy. I think that might have even been triple Ion Shell for a small window there. Taiga is going to be slowed down here as he tried to TP rotate over His to help HP out the Tidehunter. Done. But he is just surrounded by little purple particles. And that'll be a tier one tower, finally. The Tidehunter was slowing this down. Darkseer really wants to take that tower. 
and start pushing deeper and deeper into the jungle and they i mean ds had dd plus the double ion shell yeah tidehunter was he was done he was so toast is going in two different directions right now as he is going for the hood uh which is you know his way to deal with i'd say the majority of the early game damage that secret can put out until the uh ta comes online Dyer's top tower is under attack nice blast Heading into the mid lane, they're gonna try and jump immediately. Boxy's trying to go for the gush, but there was already a TA trap set in place. And they didn't have Ravage, so it was sort yeah. of unlikely that they were gonna get all the damage out there to be able to kill him in time. I felt like you were just kind of throwing spells to throw spells. Yeah, that feels like one of those positions. If anything, I feel like they could have made a move on the Nisha top. Yeah, Nisha was seeing the Ice Blast actually came out of the jungle and back into lane for a moment there. Lena in some big trouble here. They can actually stay on top of her with the Spectre, but now Box is going to join him. He doesn't have that Ravage, though. Using it earlier may have just cost his Lena his life. They aren't going to be able to get the Terrorize. That actually roots in the Wiz. He wasn't able to get out of that cold feed area. Now the Bedlam will help finish off that uh, Squishier here on the Dark Seer, but it's Ancient Apparition who's going to go down. Now they're going to focus on the Wiz in the back line as the Absurd does end up falling. Puppy using his ultimate to try and get in position, but running into Brambles there. Three dead on the side of Secrets. Radiant Not quite the dive that they'd really hoped for. I think that's fine for them. Uh, personally, Nisha just immediately went back top, and mid one took the mid tower. And he's about to finish the Deso at 13 minutes. Oh, yeah, he did take that mid tower. Yeah, and he's going to steal this ancient stack too, potentially. He's running. This would be pretty big. This is uh, meant to be Sven's, and it looks like he's going to clean this up no problem. He's even going to lay down the trap over there uh, just to see if anyone comes. Not sure if any pings are coming out yet, but yeah, he'll leave the. Ancient Black Dragon, but doesn't really care as he got the majority of the gold. And that's pretty significant sequence of events because they already grabbed the tower. Alliance, aside from getting the kills, don't get anything while losing their mid tower, which I think is pretty massive for the TA versus Lena matchup. Especially given how much this is going to boost the TA forward. I mean, if you look at this Darkseer Spectre TA, you don't have a super active hero until the TA comes online. Yeah. And with this early of an Adesso, like mid one's going to have a great time at 20, 25 minutes. I'm it's sure. part of those things where if you want to look at, uh, I think it's a very easy way as a fan to just look at it and say like, oh, well, if you're a casual observer, you'll say, well, they traded three for two. Isn't that a good thing? Like, uh, but it's not because Alliance didn't. Yes, they got like one more kill, but the overall gold lead will go to the favor of secret yeah. and they'll just get more. Uh, space on the map. Smoking up to the top lane. This would be a very big kill. They can find it with the Spectre. Don't actually hit him with the LSA. They're going to spot him with this Ice Blast, though. Will be managed to get him. They threw every single ultimate that they had to be able to kill him. But they do bring down the big carry Radiant's of Team tower. Secret and now looking to potentially take that tower. We'll see whether or not Secret wants to defend or if they're just going to occupy this Radiant jungle. I really like how they use uh, AA, by the way. They use it as like their anti-carry hero on yep. the side of Alliance, and I think that's really smart. Uh, looks like we're going to see a trade. Bottom lane, you want your Tidehunter to be there, your big beefy guy, to frontline this, but most likely it's looking like Looks like he's going to be fine at defending this, and in fact, they find Nisha again, but he's getting deep into his jungle right now. Going to make the defense happen at bottom. They have such a global presence with their team. Boxy does have the Ravage threaten to blow it out with the Ice Blast over the top. Maybe they can burst down one of these heroes, but there's still a refraction up on mid one. They've already burned through it though, and Mickey tries to go for it, but there is going to be that big surge. Gets him out of the way of that AoE stun, away from the Brambles as well. They're going to get Zai here. It looks like that is going to help things out. It would have kind of sucked if they'd blown Ravage and only killed the five position in Puppy, but at least they get the three of Team Secret as I'm well. I'm very surprised that they went for that under the tower. The game was yeah. fine for them. Uh, there's no reason to have to do that. And Boxy is, without a doubt, the worst target to go for there. Oh, for sure. Curse Crown does buy him enough time. Good Bramble placement there. The yeah, Ice Blast comes in just to secure his retreat, but yeah, just going for Boxy, uh, his Kraken is going to proc, and he's going to get that Ravage off under the Tier 2 tower. Yeah. Maybe if they had, like, one more hero down there with them, but 
uh, going for that just seemed a little bit ambitious as instead they're gonna make the move the hot Spectre top. ultimate look go for the lead in the back line see if they can control the terrorize though he's gonna be able to cover his tracks Mick it can now turn around especially with the brambles catching out that Spectre they've locked him down he's dead they do have gaps or mid one can still lay out a lot of damage especially he's going to align vacuum only pulling in back in Madara but now Mick a, as he was saved by the terrorize can come back into this team fight and go for mid one he's already taken so much damage but it's surged up running away with the extra bit of sustain from Yapsor that will help keep mid one alive they kill the Dark Willow and now looking to get out but Poppy at full health here still has his ultimate thought about trying to cut off Alliance before they got to that high ground triangle area great move by Alliance they instantly align themselves away from the wall they take the fight to the left Nisha thinks that there's enough chaos on the ground happening that he can just walk in uh, but a few things happened there Puppy got stopped at the end when he was trying to charge by the brambles mm-hmm Mid one was in no fighting shape. He went as far as he could with that haste. Radiant and then by the time you try to step back forward, uh, it was a little bit too late. They will eventually grab this tier two tower. Radiant's bottom tower has fallen. And that was also a product of the Tidehunter not having the Ravage. Uh, Secret really wanted to take that fight while it was on CD. I feel like we've seen a couple fights now where Nisha has died, but uh, Team Secret's gotten something out of it. But he's getting a little low in the net worth chart, sitting at 6,800 right next to the Tide Hunter. Are you concerned at all by that? Yes, because I think that the damage that Alliance puts out largely ignores the Radiance. You're not relying on these like right clicking cores, and the right clicking core that is going to matter to the Sven will have BKB, so mm -hmm. he doesn't have that Radiance uh, miss effect chance applied to him. So you're saying the Spectre needs to be... Oh, the Ravage was the X plus as well. They're going to try and focus on mid one as best as possible. Boxy even daring it. One more hit from the uh, mid one, And he does survive through that one hit. They do have the Terrorize and the two in the back line. But again, the Surge, this extra movement speed makes it so this fear factor, there is no. They just get a full retreat out. Nobody gets picked off. They forced out a Ravage. Good fight for Team Secret, seemingly. Yes. And of course, I think that Nisha, will, when he gets like six slotted, will just... He'll be able to win the game because he can get to the back line so easily. Mm -hmm. But uh, his timing needs to be better than this. Because it's a little bit scary. Like I said, the Radiance doesn't really affect the Sven. The Tidehunter, like the majority of his damage, doesn't it doesn't care either. He's yeah. got a pipe coming on himself. Uh, and then you've got Mickey who, you know, he's going to go for the Magic Burst build too. And he's got enough range that uh, he can work off of that. And Lena may be squishy, but she's going to be protected by the war cry, by the pipe. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of saying, like, his timing slowed down enough, and he's going to hit this Radiance, but that Radiance isn't going to make the big splash they usually expect. You need more items out of the Spectre before she's really impactful. Yes. Uh, and so that's where, like, the matched timing comes in. Okay. I still think that... I'm not sure. Because uh, if I were Secret, I'd want, like, on their lineup, like, one more way to initiate. Yeah, I feel like that's sort of what they're missing, like an easy, non-like hard commit. Just being able to like throw out a stun, because right now their stun is, uh, you know, puppy just like throwing himself like a frying pan, <laughs> just kind of like chucking himself. That's always like the funny part about Spear Breaker is like his body is the stun, right? Yeah. Like, I, I don't know why that always makes me laugh when I think about it. He just sort of like body slams you. You know, he doesn't get to uh, just like cast a lantern. And everyone's stunned up. <laughs> Similar like, uh, like Axe. His body is the damage, basically. Yes, it's really weird. <laughs> 20 minute bounty runes are up and evenly split here. And they've been evenly split all game, it seems. 12 to 7. Pretty even game. A slight lead for Team Seeker. We're talking about the downsides for Nisha. Obviously, the flip side of the coin is, is that mid one is so far ahead of uh of where he probably should be compared to the average templar assassin sitting at eleven thousand net worth and i mean he's like he's somebody that he has so much intense physical damage that it can cut through warcry right now well, puppy's dead yes and okay so normally ta everyone knows about her drop off point yeah and it usually comes against teams that can kite her as the bkb starts to fade and that usually means like range heroes and there's three range heroes that kite her very well on the side of like lena plus a plus uh willow and the only one that she can really burst without having like an escape mechanism is really the AA. yeah but as soon as he gets nice blast to lsa they're gonna use everything they have to quickly kill this dark seer the big team fight hero 
It's worth committing that much because I don't think Secret can fight without the Darks here. If they could do something like Roshi or two, it'd be sick, but uh, maybe they assume there's also a, a trap in there. Uh, plus, you do have a global presence here, but Madar is just going to use his God Strength to finish up this tier two. Nice decisive move by Alliance. Oh, bottom lane, they're just going for it. We're just going to go for the high ground push, see if they can force uh, Alliance back here as they take this tier 2 tower. The tier 2 is falling, but the tier 3 is already down to half health, and now they're going to try and catch anybody who's left here in he, mid lane from Alliance. But. He thought about it. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. He thought about throwing out the uh, the realm. Do you think it would have been worth it? It's 200 gold, baby. Yeah, that 200 gold, I'll take it. I mean, Especially since he's almost got that spirit vessel, which is all important. Yeah, but this AA can go for... A ghost scepter and it would make him yeah so then you've got shadow realm yeah from from willow a ghost scepter from ancient apparition and then a self yules if you pop your bkb then it's it's going to be a self yules from the lena like any of that just buys you that two three four seconds that makes the ta's game much harder which is so focused on being able to blink in one two one hero is dead go next yeah that's why ta just like naturally falls off because She's a range. She she's a she's masquerading as a range hero, mm. in a way because she's she's a full commitment melee hero essentially. Yeah. Um, just the way, especially the way that meld works, right? Like your full commitment melee hero. So, mid one after whatever item he decides to go for, which is going to be the Daedalus, has to go for a nullifier next. We are talking about deep future though. Right now, like when BKB, her timing starts falling off and stuff, this is still a fresh 10 second BKB yes. for mid one. This is going to be a very strong team fight potentially for Team Secret, especially if they can get the jump here. Madara, his smoke is going to pop. So is Zai. Zai, they're going to try and target him down first. Same thing in person down with the guys, but terrorizing the backline as well. The Ravage goes out, controlling up those heroes. All of that used to be able to kill a Darks here. They got him, yes. Mid one, meanwhile, popping his BKB. He's trying to focus down some heroes. Going for the Tidehunter isn't the best target. Now his BKB is out. He used 10 seconds to kill nothing. Didn't kill the Ancient Apparition. Couldn't finish off the Tidehunter. Make a dodge to miss well. And now that means all of the lines is here to be able to finish off Nisha. Secret, lose four, and get nothing. Four of Alliance are low. All of them, around 33% or less, but couldn't actually get a single bounty there. Again, it's it's the fact that it's not, you have to commit your heroes in melee range to these heroes that are very good against melee range heroes. Mm -hmm. And uh, Alliance, and the reason why Sven is such a good hero is that he can com he can commit himself with a stun in that position and no one can ignore him. Whereas like on the side of a, a secret, you're just gonna get kited. Uh, your only real initiation is this really slow, easy to move, uh, Darkseer, or, uh, Spearbreaker. Like, Puppy's not really a threat anymore, and as far as stuns go, none of their cores really have one. They have slows. All of them have slows for days. <laughs> but actual, like, stuns, and stuns are what determine Dota. We've seen Alliance, like, heavily, heavily, heavily commit for these kills on Darkseer. Do you think fights look differently if Secret, uh, has their darks here not in the front line. If he's able to come in and do some sort yeah, of wall Yeah, but part of the problem is he sort of has to be. Yeah. Like, who, who else is going to get, like, who else yeah, is going to no, front no line Yeah, no one really, you? because you can't let Puppy get it. Uh, the annoying part is you can't let Puppy get initiated on because he's your stun. Yeah. And once you take him out of the equation, uh, the team fight gets a lot harder for you. Radiant he also has, like, two... He has a way to stop the BKB Sven temporarily, so you need him in the back. So the in, the, in an ideal world, you live in... The Darkseer is able to just like tank up so much that it doesn't matter, but he doesn't because AA just just wrecks him every time in the fight. We saw the ramp up of net worth, typical for Spectres. Nisha, his net worth is actually stalled out right now. Yeah, and this is also why it's very important for Boxy when we talked about why Tidehunters need net worth at all times. Like he needs to continue to scale with the rest of his cores. Yeah. Uh, and because you know at some point your spells top out, and there's not a lot of uh, the part of the problem with Tidehunter is there's not a lot of items that make his spells feel any better. You're not going to go like Kaya on Tide. You're not going to go... Uh, you're not going to go for like all these other side items. Catching in from the side, they swoop in, catch Insania. So they need... You just need like raw net worth and stuff as... Ooh, that is a lot of damage. Nisha. You heard Alliance yell right there? Yeah, yeah. Oh, the relocate coming in from the side. They do have the charge onto Taiga right now, and that is a misterrorize. But as long as it's only Taiga and not Mickey, pretty yeah, sure Alliance be... is super happy with the exchange. That one for one is 
Good for them, but though. yeah, mid one just walking into the Roche pit and the trap should see the Tide Hunter coming in too. Just gonna get uh, charged through him. Boxy slightly the control. They're gonna go for this Sven here. Look how quickly he's actually maybe dying here. Does manage to get out the war cry, but it's immediately taken down by a couple shots from mid one. Madara though has already used God Strength and BKB. He's gonna throw out the Ravage. This alliance really ready to take this T fight. I'm not so sure. Madara's gonna come back in, try and take this Madara fight. Madara is controlling up these heroes. Madara came back in and died. Puppy, he may be gone on by Tiger. That doesn't really matter. The Ice Blast coming in though. That's gonna matter a lot more. His mid one is at half HP right now, but they have no damage to follow up on that one. Mickey is currently farting around with Zai. He's trying to deal some damage out to this Darks here, but he has too much sustain. And now the charge, Puppy, okay, he actually canceled that charge, but that's okay. I am Mickey's dead anyway. So surprised they decided to take that fight. Just disengage. Yeah, that, you're, you're in a perfectly fine position. Uh, Midrax has died. Everything's cool. I'm, huh. Like, use BKB, God Strength, your Sven is at 25% HP. Yeah, he has no BKB. Like, Nobody should be making the call to use that Ravage. We're Just gonna give go them back Roche in. Just give them Roche. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, you're still up 6k gold, but by willingly committing yourself there, somebody, the thing is, you, you, you don't know who to blame in that position because... Whoever made the call. Yeah, it, it, it made for... it very clear, I think, that Madara was told, just just go ahead, don't worry. Yeah. Like, we're, we're gonna burst her instantly. Uh, and instead, he literally got one shot and died, and then... I'm not even convinced that they could have taken Roche. Yes, they used BKB, but you're talking about Ravage, Terrorize, Ice Blast. Like, those are all really good Roche controlling abilities, too. Yeah, all you have to do, I think, is calm down, let him blink back, Yeah. TP to the Shrine, bury yourself some salves, anything. Mm -hmm. uh, even just, I, I don't know, that was a very confusing circumstance because... Radiant's top tower is under attack. I mean, I felt like their position in the game was fine as... You see the charge through. Uh, I mean, realistically, you don't even have to pop BKB there because there's no follow-up stuns on this side, yeah. this side of Seeker. Once once the charge ends, there's literally nothing you have to worry about. And then uh, Madara comes back in, gets charged, and then literally gets one shot and dies. Yeah. And then their damage becomes so split at this point because it's hard for Mickey to get up into that high ground to focus on mid one, who you can see is ice blasting and a half HP. He has to play the distance game, so instead he just hits what's in front of him, which is Darks here, but he's too tanky too. Yeah, and uh just a uh... Well now you got And Madara apparently died while we were watching the replay. I was wondering why he was dead for 40 and Okay, well, uh, that's not good, because now they've got a Daedalus double damage on mid one, and he is hoping he can finish off the tier three, and then Secret can go for some shrines. Still 10 seconds on the deck for this Sven. Would you chance it? No. Because Secret is careful. They have experience, and they know, and this is something that I feel like sometimes Alliance, like, they randomly lack is, don't go for that. There's nothing, you know, uh, eventually a better fight will present itself to you. It was their strength in game one against LGD where they just kept hitting LGD over and over and over again with so much speed and force that LGD could never recover. But in this kind of game, like, you just needed to not take that fight. You yeah. needed to actually say... You just had to be calm. Yeah. That was the time to be relatively calm and uh, by just kind of all out forcing it, it just feels like they were making life hard for themselves. Yeah. Day on disc for Yapsor and next a Ghost Scepter. So he's come up with a lot of ways to increase his survivability when he jumps in, tries to help out Midwan or Nisha in the middle of these team fights so he will not be so easily burst down. Nice blast just across the map there. Not sure if that was just scouting for some vision. Man. Secret though are so good at coming back in these positions. Yeah. Like that's for me that that's a sign of why, uh, no matter what their form looks like or like whether or not they uh, are trying like the hardest, they can just perform, and they're gonna look good. <laughs> uh, what do you think about the Rod of Atos? Because we were talking about oh you know build Ghost Scepter for kiting this Spectre and, and TA instead he went for a very offensive item in Rod of Atos which. Does I guess have synergy the, with the cold feet, but yeah, I guess that's like the dark seer spec counter, but yeah, he's got Manta, he's got BKB, DS has Greaves. Sit behind Boxy here, the terrorize coming out. They really do not want to blow this ravage. 
they know if Secret managed to force out the Ravage there, 30, 45 seconds later, Secret's going to be hitting their high ground once again. Yeah, and uh, Alliance with a full set of racks up is 6,000 gold behind. It's never a good sign as mid one is pretty beastly now. Just uh, very impressive. What do you think about uh, Butterfly as the next item for him? Uh, I mean, Sven's not going to go for MKB, right? He's yeah. demonstrated that he's going to go for the AC next, so... He's keeping one item ahead, and I think that's fine. Fair enough. His Alliance... Gonna smoke up here. Still have that Ravage. Still have all their big team fight combo. They just need the right kind of initiation. Not one where they're ravaging and don't have the immediate follow-up on three. They want to be able to see the success was when Alliance is like gone the dark and they just throw a bunch of spells at him. Mm -hmm. I see Aegis will now fade out, but they did plenty with it. They got map control. That's uh that's that Aegis right there as Insania. Stop okay, puppy right here. Breaker. He's trying to get off his ultimate. That'll also get him away from the cold feed, so he doesn't actually get stunned. And Nisha, they thought they were going to maybe TP in and kill Puppy. It's the other way around. I would imagine the reason why they considered that fight was because it was on around the shrine and there was a ward there. Yeah. But still, uh, it was very odd of Insania to make the call to go for the aggression. Because Secret at this point, all good teams at 30 minutes, they will play together as five. Okay. There's going to be uh, a way to stop the Spirit Breaker, and he does juke out the relocate. It's not like uh, Puppy doesn't have a dust. You notice that about all these like greedy or five position captains? They uh, they just don't love dust. I'm like, what's the point? I'm like, going to spend at minimum puppy? 90 gold for a kill? Yeah, it's not like this Lena just bought the Shadow Blade. He's had it for yeah. like... <laughs> They do have a gem on darks here, but, you know, your initiator, I feel like, should have some form of detection. Yeah, for sure. It's just funny. Uh, so now he's given the sentries. Yapsar's like, here, sir. The rare times where Yapsar is going to be giving instead of taking. It's 19 to 15, 7,000 net worth lead for Team Secret, but Alliance do have that mid lane of barracks down while uh, team secret have yet to take a tier three secret definitely has full control of the map right now when you have this much control of the map uh that racks doesn't matter because yeah. you're you're just pushing in this bottom or this uh mid lane all the time anyways you're just running up and down extending your net worth lead doing a very good job of that as poor centaur might be going down here in a second in fact gets replaced and the worst part is, is I, I think there's uh, significant upgrades on the way. Once you get the heart on the Spectre, then she is no longer fearing as much the Laguna Blade Ice Blast combo mm -hmm. that almost completely destroys her in a team fight. She's gonna, even if she does die, she's gonna bounce back so much extra damage with the dispersion. Like that's a significant upgrade. You're talking about the Nullifier for uh, mid one, which he hasn't actually gone yet. He went for a on the high ground here, Foxy. He's got to be careful. He's gonna run up into this, but mid one's already taken off. Oh, look at that damage. He's dead, and he doesn't have buyback either. And Foxy can't hold on to that Ravage long enough. He was waiting for the BKB to fare out, but that doesn't happen. This is what happens when you have the map control here. You can have certain things like DD runes that can completely win team fights. They try and go for the fast kill onto Zai, but Zai is not going to be taken out here. Taiga throwing the Terrorites out. It's going to be a bit too late, and everybody is going to make their way back here from Team Secret. Some of them are a little bit too low. That TA dealt plus 407. <laughs> with, uh, so he was hitting for like 560 a hit. <laughs> Let me just, with, uh, with the Daedalus. Sven just got shredded. He just got tossed into the dirt. All right, so. I mean, without, okay, now they're gonna throw out the Ravage Seed, they can pull a mid one, and they are gonna be able to do so. Yapsor was not able to get the tether in time and start healing him up, and Insania turns around with the Ice Blast there, but if they can walk this off, it would be massive. Nisha actually gets stunned up at Cold Feet. Yule Scepter as well. Just Still keep on him down it. with the Gush, just keep on poking him at. They try and pull him in with the Vacuum, that's where Puppy's gonna try and make some sort of commitment to push the Lina away from Nisha as best as possible. Boxy just stays on top of these heroes, though. Knowing that they can't turn on him, especially now that Sven is back alive with Warcry. 
giving him the extra movement speed to try and hunt down some of these heroes. Bigger spot, Puppy, bidding for the kill onto the Ancient Apparition, also creating space for Nisha to try and get away, but he's now been found by Taiga, who managed to get the Curtis Crown stun onto him. Yapsor does have a relocate, but Mickey, this is why he's Shadow Blading, not towards Nisha, but towards wherever the Willow might be, is there now going to throw out the Laguna Blade, Ice Blast combination, they're almost there, they need a bit more damage, they got him! Yapsor trying to tether in, is just going to find himself surrounded by Alliance members. Aeon just will buy him a little bit of time here, in fact, they're even focusing on the Sven Illusion, which which was causing Insania some troubles, but finally, Madara does manage to get the kill. Don't forget the gem, sirs. You saw that one on the ground. That was a buyback from Puppy, too. Yeah, and overall, uh, very nice net worth win, but still, they have such a mountain to climb. Like, that was Secret just sort of uh, saying, that, okay, the game's over. Like, we can just kind of walk in, but yeah. without they the BKB, the TA does go down very quickly. It's a good read by Alliance that they can take that kind of three man. Uh, Puppy's gonna be spotted here. The Ice Blast actually seeing mid one come in and also gives him the heads up to get the Yule Scepter off on a Puppy. Now they're gonna be able to get the Whoa. Oh no! She just came back alive she on mid one. Now he's dead for 90 seconds. There's uh, Alliance, five alive. Just go for it. Yeah, they're gonna get two sets. Uh, a secret is just playing a little too fast and loose. Mid one just kind of naturally assumed that they were gonna back up, I think, and. In fact, they were going to make the aggressive move on a Mickey and... Puppy's like, let's go for this kill. Let's just shoot from the hip and Alliance. We're like, okay. That's a freebie. As... Remember what you said? All oh, these teams that are good at 30 minutes, they're going to play together. Well, Alliance, they were together. Yeah, and uh, it is secret. Now they're sort of like taking turns to <laughs> get a little bit reckless and cocky. Uh -huh. Alliance, when they had the 5k lead, they decided to YOLO it a bit, take that weird fight. And Alliance are gifted it back as... Uh, I mean, at the end of the day, Secret never got anything aside from a tier 3 tower out of this, and they might even get Roshan here, as they don't know it yet, but the TA still doesn't have buyback, 340 gold short. Go for Insania, Insania's fine with that one, he just wants to be able to buy his team time, he throws out the Ravage there, that's gonna be able to, oh, Nisha has to actually jump inside the pin, it's only Mickey focusing on Roshan right now, but Nisha's trying to grab it, Mickey gets it just in time, and he stays alive, and now it's Madara inside the pit, Nisha's trying to dagger his way through, he's got the cheese bombs, his man's up, and he's been he's hit got by cheese. the LSA, get the cheese up, get the cheese up, no, he's dead! back inside the pit to allow the rest of Secret to retreat. But their carry, their big carry who had the cheese dies before he can get it off and does not have buyback, much like mid one, didn't have it before him. He will have it in a short second. It's uh, 70 gold away. 70 gold. But That's still speed. just Alliance opting to fight without their TA. Yeah, Secret has just been... <laughs> that is 21,000 of your net worth. That... Uh-huh you could have just waited for. And again, the, I, I feel like this Aegis, uh, it's not game-breaking. Yeah, and Aegis, Lena and Aegis, Sven, like... She doesn't have BKB, you can get yeah. on top of her. It's more important that you don't just throw away heroes there, and Zai used the buyback for that too, and so now, uh, Secret, they're in such a do-or-die position. Well, they will have a chance for one more good high ground five-man hold. Dude, this game's wild. Potentially, as uh, Alliance, 25 seconds. They're not going to try and, and play it too fast and just, like, rush down, see if they can get Megas real quick. They're going to yeah, both take teams, the shrines. Both teams need to reset themselves a little bit here. As we saw, 30 seconds still for this TA. The Ravage was, uh, like, oh, it was, it was great. It just actually hit Look all those heroes Insania on the didn't even die right here. Yeah. And as a result, he's able to reset in the fight with the rest of his team. Also, shout out to Mickey not panicking in that moment and, like, finishing up Roshan instead of leaving Spectre yes. alone inside the pit and also being fast enough to grab the Aegis. By far the coolest part about that, though, was the Ravage from Boxy. Oh, yeah. The get to the edge of the Roche pit, catch everybody. Mm-hmm. When I first saw it, I was like... Huh? And then I see the outside of the pit where he hits like almost everyone. It's like, oh, okay. oh, he actually pixel perfect. 26 to 20. It's now Alliance with the 2000 gold lead. But more importantly, two lanes of barracks are down. Yeah, and they're, they're about to get a silver edge to deal with this, uh, the specter. And if you thought that net worth was a bit of a roller coaster, love to see the win percentage <laughs> as I'm sure that was. <laughs> What is this? <laughs> what am I looking at? I was almost like 80, 85% advantage it looks like, to It secret. almost looks like a heartbeat, you know? Boop. <laughs> Boop. 
Oh man, that is... I love games like this, personally. I think they're so fun. Because Dota is inherently messy. Yeah, and... You try and treat it clinically as you want, but... I'm going to tell you guys what happened, but, it, you know, it doesn't make it any less entertaining. And it's just what happens in Dota. You know, you get a little bit over-aggressive. You see some moves on the map, and you want to be decisive, so you go for it. Oh, smoke behind Nisha. It almost seems like they're trying to bait him right now. Oh, but both teams are going to know about each other's presence with uh, Boxy coming oh, forward. Oh, they're still going to go for Nisha as they show mid one in the mid lane. The charge on in is going to be able to slow down Monora. Nisha's actually thinking about turning and fighting right now. He feels comfortable enough with this, and they do manage to get the stun out. There goes the Ravage, but mid one just keeps on focusing on this Sven. While Sven trying to go for Puppy, trying to hide into the tree. So the Mega Tiger set as well. Mid one beating through some of these heroes. Now the side blades out onto Boxy. They're going to leave that one up next as Alliance has definitely lost this fight. It's just a question of how many heroes they're going to lose. And they got the charge up. Does have the charge on to Mickey. That's a much more important kill, but it looks like Insania is very dead. He doesn't have a TP, so they're eventually going to kill him. And, and he gets they, the charge hit. They have the relocate to get on top of Lena, but they may not even need it. It's one shot, two shot. That's going to be enough. And Age is down. And as you said, he doesn't have BKB, so they can just stick on top of him in the second life, and he'll die so quickly. Show me that win probability, JJ. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to keep dropping. There's no way it's going to stay right there. His buybacks are being used or whatever. The sharp decline back. Down <laughs> as I, their decision to go for the specter there. Once the ice blast doesn't connect, uh -huh. you're you're done for. Yeah. Because the heart plus the wisp regen makes that fight impossible. You know he's gonna reset. He's gonna be full HP. Uh, whenever Madara com uh, commits like that to the burst, the one hit with the echo saber, and he doesn't get a kill. Yeah. The fight is so impossible for him at that point. Mm. Puppy just sticks on top of him, makes it so hard for him to breathe can't really get around here as they are going to march down this lane. All right, Most so likely take uh, two racks for themselves minimum here. Yeah. And like, uh, Alliance, how much are you giving up? Who's... Like, your Sven's not buying back, obviously. Is your Lina going to buy back? But can you really fight without the Tide and Ancient Apparition anyway? Is there is there a point in doing I, that? I would put Secret... If I was Secret, I would just put them in a position where I would potentially try to go for Megas here. Yeah. Or at least even up the racks. You've got to force the buybacks. Okay, there's the buybacks from both the Tide as well as the Lina. Looks like Tide just got his buyback in time. Yeah, so now Secret resets, uh, and the Aegis was wasted. Now, Here's the now let's thing. check the win probability. Yeah. Go ahead. There's a cheese still on the Spectre. Radiance, oh, yeah. God, I forgot about that. I yeah, forgot he I didn't use that did. cheese in that one fight. And now we're pretty much almost back down to the 85% that Team Secret was not so long ago. <sighs> this is, uh... <laughs> oh, man. I... The, I, I like how he's thinking about blade mail. I don't is, hate it. I don't hate it either because uh, what it does is it counters the Sven's low BKB timer now. Yeah. It makes it so that when the Sven jumps you with his, what is it? It, it has to be like five now, right? With his five second BKB timer, you pop this blade mail and all that time is now just wasted. Yeah. And on top of that, you've got uh, the 25 uh, extra dispersion talents. So... Your blade mail is blocking back. Oh, he's a swerving bunch, though. Uh, uh, physical damage. Oh, satanic hunt. He's gonna go for uh, something else. He's gonna get the nullifier instead of our templar assassin, huh? So she's she's just gonna try and pop ultimate, get on top of Lena, and nullify her. Yeah. Oh man, this game. Uh, it's crazy. It's it very enjoyable indeed. <laughs> You, you know, for sure, every single time I think that the game is over, something just... Let's just say it happens. <laughs> the way you make it sound, it's like a natural event. Like an earthquake just happened. Yeah. Change the game up. It just, uh, it just occurs. Somebody willed it. Oh, I do like the Stormhammer dispels enemies' talent this game, by the way. A lot of Sven's, uh, most carry Sven's in games that don't feature Darkseer, yeah. will get the 30 move speed. Mm -hmm. But in this game, I think against the DS, you pretty much have to. Yeah, especially since we're closing in on that 25, we can have the AoE surge. And I, I'm presuming that just spell only apply to the single target? Or do you think it applies to everything it hits? Um, and then AoE, I have... Everything it hits? It hits? Oh, we'll it see hits. it's that. Let's see it's that. This on the low between you and yeah 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 they didn't hear that nobody else so it's gonna dispel everything that it hits when they so if you do an aoe surge but you're immediately hit by a storm hammer that's everybody there goes all you that movement we have such a rules away. of dota thanks i uh by the way zai is 
very farmed at this point. He's got the Lotus Orb to bounce back. He's got a BKB, nine seconds, pipe, Helm of Dom, Gem, Greaves. This man has uh, not fallen far behind. People are actually running out of slots now. I see the, the TA. Mid one's thinking about like uh, going back for a Blink Dagger for a moment. Now he's looking at Scotty. I really feel like Insania needs a Ghost Scepter. Yeah. Or, uh, or a Glimmer. Yeah. I'll, I'll take either. You need a way to disengage in these engagements. Oh, I love Glimmer Cape this late because you know the carries aren't holding Yo, us. Yo, look at Yapsort. He's so farmed. I don't know how this guy does it, but he just... He almost has a heart? Oh. Oh, dear. He does indeed almost have a heart. And he's got the level 25 talent now. He could have taken the... Uh, he actually went for the 150 GPM instead of the uh, Tether Grants. Ags, yeah. Yeah, you could have given it to uh, Nisha and he could have played like Naruto or something. <laughs> yeah, but then he jumps away from your tether. And so it's a one and done situation. You get one <laughs> teleport and then you no longer have the Ags. <laughs> or, here's the thing, you're next level uh -huh. and you time the tether. So when he comes back in, you relocate, follow where he's going. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, that's okay. The, uh, that's the ultra next level play. Uh-huh, uh -huh. I like it. He's got uh, attacks targets now. I just realized that. He, he has two guys whose uh, ags predicate on getting away from him. <laughs> sure. You know, like the TA teleport and the spec. Uh, plus the uh, plus the spear breaker. Literally all the ags except for the Darkseer gets them farther away from him. So I, I guess this is <laughs> one of the few times. synergy, yeah. Yeah, this is one of the few times where you entirely skip that. Oh, that's so funny as the next Roshan. It will be an Ags. And for Alliance, the AA Ags Ice Blast. That's or high. even the Lena one. The Lena one is good. Uh, let me say Boxy's is probably the worst. If I'm, if I'm just honest here, Boxy, sorry. I, I don't know how much I love your... Hey, we gush. I, I hate that town. Or I hate that Ags. It's like you're throwing out a wave of terror. You know, it's, not, it's just not that cool. You have the Ag's Dark Willow that everyone was complaining about. What if it also did like a 0.25 second stun? Would that be broken? The AoE Gush? Yeah. What? What if it's like... That would be mega <laughs> broke. What is wrong with what you? What about like 0.1? Let's just give him two Ravages. I'm sure it's not a big deal. 0.1 second stun. Whenever he throws they, it they out. They just kind of like stagger for a moment. Radiant I mean, Bobby Queen of Pain Bobby gets like a friggin' a level 25 back. talent. Okay, what if he did a pushback instead of a stun? Radiant okay, but it's a pushback where you can't. You know, it's like, okay, you see his taunt right there? It's like you wiggle your arms and you're like, ooh. <laughs> you do a, a backstroke. You can't do anything. <laughs> everyone does a backstroke. Yeah, everyone just. Everyone uses their taunt ability. Boxy, he's gonna uh, swim in there. Modder is going to jump for it. The four staff holding on to the Terrorize. That's Vector Ultimate trying to decide where he's going to go. Nisha actually oh, holding on to it for so long, but Modder is getting chunked right now. He turns around with the Satanic, though. Now he's got the opportunity. All that physical damage doesn't do a one, but look at that. They're stuck, in the wall. Wall. They're stuck inside the wall. They're so slowed down. They do spot the real Vector, though. They see the real one. Can they actually burst him down with the Ravage going down? The Lotus Orb is not going to be enough. They kill him, but he does buy back. Tyson to have the ultimate, though. Modder in the back lines. Get away from the Captain of Buffy. They're going to be okay. Modder is trying to get out. He's going to be good. Seeker to bot back on one. They're going to buy back on more here. Spectre's fought back. So is the Spirit Breaker. Alliance just need to get away from this. They need to be able to get back to their found to heal up. Part of the reason the Secret's buying back, though, Roshan is up. Alliance is low enough that they're not going to be here oh, in the they pit. They take this so quickly, too. And Alliance, I mean, an overall team fight win is they did force the buyback on two separate cores, but the Aegis is going to reset this game for them anyways. Who, uh... Who gets it? Give it, uh, give it to the Wisp. Let him just like chuck him around. Do, 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 do. Oh, they're gonna give it to uh, they're gonna give it to Puppy. In fact. Oh yeah. They, I mean, that's AOE control. You get the vacuum in like yeah. they were just walled. You get oh, the AOE Nether Strike. Oh, that'd be sick. God, that was such a garbage axe, but it's finally good in this it, one situation. Because the thing about it is, like, the other axes are just kind of memes. I think the IO one's pretty cool. I'm uh. Where he, he like he just pops out spirits every once in a while. That's his thing. Yeah, he just uh, you know. I don't think that's really doing all. It's annoying. Isn't the Ag Starks here? Is that is that the still the increase the the power of the wall? The increase the amount of damage. Yeah, 140 percent scepter replica damage. 
I, I think you should. It's either the wall or the nether strike, and I'm actually okay with the nether strike, yeah, given yeah, the vacuum too. I just saw. Me too. Uh, but Alliance, I, the reason why they're able to turn that fight is because Secret, they they jumped the gun a little bit. They thought that the Sven was dead, uh -huh. so they refocused and kind of got split up a little bit yep. as a result. And so Puppy started going for the back line, and then Madara pops his Satanic, is able to live, he fights back, and all of a sudden Secret also have low BKBs, and Nisha's all, all by himself in No Man's Land. He's like way up the hill, the rest of his team, like the way that they fought was just an, such an awkward angle, like half of his team was on the low ground. Uh, Puppy was like already way past, you know, he was looking yeah. past the future. Do you think, um, they have two cheeses now? Because they still have not used that first cheese. Yeah, I mean, the problem with that cheese is if you get ice blasted, it doesn't, yeah. really, doesn't really matter. So I guess that's my, my question to you. Do you think Alliance should be the ones looking for a fight right now, given that most of their buybacks are up, whereas Secret have three of them that are on cooldown? But Team Secret also has this Aegis for another two and a half minutes, and they have two cheeses. Like, which one is better, the buybacks or the, the second life? You know? Uh, I think that the second life is right now the best because it puts, it's like a scary position for Alliance to be in. Yeah. Where if you get wiped, it doesn't really matter, right? Uh, but I, I, I'd say this game is, despite the 14k lead, I'd say it's as even as it gets as Oh my goodness, look at that fast charge. He doesn't even get off the Shadow Realm in time. He needs to pop it now and try and TP out or something. Oh, he just gets burned. And but he just gets burned down does have the uh, buyback, and that was the commitment of the haunt. So that's 100 seconds on the floor for him. And Insania, he doesn't have buyback, and his oh, Ice Blast no. is so big. They need that Ice Blast so badly. Insania is trying to get oh, up. He's charged no. up. He's going to die here, and that is going to be I can't a buyback believe... from Dark Will and a 4 versus 5. I cannot believe he was out there. His Ice Blast is so key to being yep. able to kill Nisha, who is taking a lot of damage here, but he's going to reset with the heart. The Whisk can heal him up, too, if he chooses. And this is, I think, quite a good opportunity for Alliance. There's no buyback, or uh, uh, for Secret, as there's no buyback on the AA. Yep. And the Ice Pass, it's so crucial. Yeah. Like, that's the entire reason they were able to kill Nisha so quickly there. Uh, and a pretty big opportunity here now for Secret. He didn't have a TP, and a Rapier is purchased. They're gonna go in a box. Oh, so box so be careful! 150 HP before the Guardian Greaves goes off. You need a reset. Everybody go heal up as secret. They're gonna continue to go for this. This is a rapier TA. I mean, this is all in on the TA, right? Yes. Like you gotta find this TA with divine and no Aegis. He does have buyback. Nisha, they're poking at him right now, seeing if they can take away that first life somehow for free. Without actually losing any heroes for it. Nisha's dropping a bit low, but every single time they're just gonna reset. Just get the heart regen kicking in again. There's that AOE surge. I will say that I would have thought that Alliance had the advantage if AA doesn't die there. Yeah. Then you can just send in your frontliners and trade out. Okay, and they broke the Spectre. That is a lot of damage immediately after the Manta was popped. They managed to get the Curse Crown, but there is the Lotus Orb to counter the Curse. 20 seconds now for this AA. And okay. so far so good as they have held for the time being. And I mean, surely it's going to be Secret that have to start playing carefully. Uh, their side lanes are pushing in. You don't have buyback on this Spectre or this Darkseer. They weren't... <laughs> the funny thing about Rapier is it makes it so you don't want to commit there. And I feel like if you're Secret, you probably want to commit with 80 seconds on the AA. Yeah. But because you have Rapier, you're so afraid to uh, take any bad fights. Because mm -hmm. you give... I feel like you give this Lina a Rapier. She's going to take home. Yeah. This game... Uh... <laughs> Mickey is trying to turn into a right click. How long do we have on the Aegis? Hero, anyways, uh, trying to build an MKB. That Aegis should be another like. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. Yeah. Uh, what's the what's the win probability, JJ? Can you bring that up for us? So, okay. Dota Plus does think that is Team Secret still have a wealthy advantage. <laughs> Just like the mountains, the two. <laughs> Usually, you see one of those, but <laughs> yeah, the two mountains. Uh, as the net worth lead, of course matters less and it's more about the buybacks at a this point. Late halberd, but it's a really powerful halberd. That is a really good choice for our Tide Hunter, who uh I presume has gone the damage, so he actually does quite a lot with his anchor smashes now. Yeah and they might go for a smoke here on uh I almost said Vega because of Madara's name, but 
on Alliance here. Yeah. As they are. Foxy's also thinking about committing for a Blink Dagger. I really want him to because I think you just can't try and go through the Spectre yes. into the, the TA. You need to get it directly on top of him and surprise him. If you him. blow up the TA, because the Wisp is also going to naturally be next to her, if you can find that position where you get on top of both of them and you just start chunking, yeah. uh, then you know the fight becomes a lot easier for your team. Your Lina can just kind of play that back line. It's the Absor with the, the Maelstrom taking advantage oh, yeah, of his level 25 talent. Tax me thing. So finally, he's actually he's gonna be doing some damage. Gonna shoot so much lightning, they'll think there's a Zeus in the game. Especially with the Mjolnir as well. You put that on the tanky Spectre. Twenty nine to twenty eight. Uh, don't let the gold lead fool you. As we saw, they can kill the Spectre. He is about to have buyback up, and so Alliance's window. You uh, you have some big 25s on Alliance that still aren't there. I think both of their supports ones are really big, right? An extra 5% oh, yeah. for the Ice Blast kill threshold. I mean, even the 700 AoE Cold Feet is quite good. Oh, I guess yeah, it, I it sort of gets countered, though, by uh, the Darkseer Surge. Yeah. The AoE, the yeah, AoE sure. versus AoE. Meanwhile, you have uh, Terrorize Duration. An extra one and a half second for an AoE Disable. Oh, that's huge, especially considering how low uh, all the BKBs have become. Yeah. But, yeah, I'll, I'll say that normally I really like that Cold Feet talent as... Charge in two, all right, he cancels it. Does have a 10 second BKB on himself too, and so it makes his uh, Ag's ulti even better. Seeker continue to own the map. I feel like what's so scary about the AoE Surge is that it's super easy to get out of position. You know, you get a little bit lazy in your positioning, all of a sudden this five man team is swarming you all with like 600 movement speed. By the way, uh, mid one has another rape. Yeah. I mean, one for one for. Honestly, uh, I love this. I love this guy. Back. The fact that he's just willing to just be like, you know what, guys, I'm playing for the win here. I don't oh, like they're you guys. smoking to each other here, but they still have that extra bit of movement speed. Looks the smoke like is gonna pop for nothing. Puppy thought about it for a second. He was in position, and Zai gonna give him the surge. Radiant Re ion shells him, and they were thinking about it. You know what's funny? If they actually smoked up into the enemy jungle. Nisha was very isolated. Then. But he does that buyback now. And I think the Darkseer doesn't, based on his gold. And he's still far away. 900 gold away is Boxy. They get hit by the trap. Nisha going in here right now. Starts poking at him. There's the Cold Feet Nullifier. Onto the Sven. They want to make sure he can't use his Satanic to be able to turn around like he did last time. The Nether Strike. He tried to hold him up, but he gets off the BKB. He needs to split, though, hit. and he couldn't get it. A big crack comes out from mid one. That finishes off him. And now the fight for Alliance is over. They're just trying to get out as many heroes as possible. And Sandy gets his TP off, but Boxy's certainly dead. They're going to be forced into three different buybacks here, and they will not have BKB or God Strength on the Sven, which are all important. Yeah, now secret. They're just ignoring the Roche. They force all three buybacks, and they can just go back and take it. They yeah. take it so quickly. This is going to be both the Ags and the Cheese. Now you can give it to your Darks here, if you so choose. You want the Refresher Shard for Nisha, for his, his buyback life? He can ult, die. Yeah, yeah, that sounds really ult. good. Oh, they give him the Aghanim Scepter, actually. Oh, okay. So we're gonna jump around. This will allow him to be able to just jump onto Lena without actually committing his full haunt if he wants to. See ya, kid. Uh... <laughs> and I guess when you have these abilities, you really don't need your boots anymore. Oh, man. Just that was... passed over the hour marker here. 29 to 31. A 42,000 net worth lead for Seeker. I did just... not realize it was that high. Honor was just nowhere near the rest of his team. Yeah. Like he... There's no backup for him. The crazy part is, if he gets a swing there with the Satanic popped, he turns that around for his team. They were all in on trying to kill him. Uh... If he pops BKB before he gets nullified, a lot of things to change. They all in for the blink dagger on the tide hunter since he's already used his buyback. Yeah, and of course, uh, for Alliance, this is a all important game. They desperately need this win to just stay alive in the tournament. Refresher shard for the dark seer, so we're going to be seeing double double vacuum, double wall. But he also has sight, vice, which is pretty important. This is the weirdest 50k lead I think I've seen in Dota. 
that makes sense. As he he actually just straight up buys the double. I thought, you know what he, I thought he was gonna do, right? Yeah, it was the it was he was the gonna buyback. save one and then buy yeah. back and then bring the second. Uh huh. Nah, this man is. This is the most <laughs> boss thing I've ever seen in professional Dota. The game isn't even secured yet, and you buy the double rapier. That is Who do you honestly, think he can one shot if he gets a crit? That is so cool. Who do you think he can one shot? Uh, let's see. Maybe I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. For me, it's no question. He dies. Probably Tiger. Dark Willow sure dies. Just, probably Tiger. But oh, he doesn't man. even necessarily need to one shot them because he's also got the melt hit bash. And they're just gonna go for it right now. Is if the Aegis on Anisha? He's gonna pop the Manta. And she get the Gosh on him. Look at him just, just gonna go. charge on through with the BKB. There's that single target launch jumping onto this fan as fast as possible with an old fire and he's gonna jump back. Focusing on the racks, but Nisha's quite low. Nobody from Alliance has actually died. In fact, they're gonna heal up Puppy here. Looks like they gave him a cheese and he's gonna gobble that one down. Get near to full again. And the refresher was actually popped? Yes. I think I saw that as well. I think well. I saw Zara use it. Yeah. They have so many cheeses and refreshers and stuff that... But I do believe that was used by him. Uh, and so Alliance, they... Don't actually get raxed. Weird kind of situation. I, I mean, the shadow step is pretty funny, though. <laughs> he just kind of went in. I think that's also the most cheeses I've seen. Yeah. That was three cheeses held by one team. Now we're down to two. And it's funny, like, Alliance, in order to get through this part of the game, they have to play, they have to make zero mistakes for, like, three different fights in a row. We have another situation where Sven fails to pop his, you know, fails to get the swing off on the Satanic and get his BKB off, or, you know, Boxy messes up a Ravage somehow, the game's just over. And so is your tournament life. Five-man smoke up from Team Secret. As they're going to show the illusions of Nisha at bottom lane. And see if they can wrap all the way around, and especially with this AOE surge. I need to see the double rapier hit. I mean, they can go just for the fast barracks, or they can see if somebody is going to poke their head out as the creepway pushes in. Nisha, he starts running forward, pops his smoke. Now he's just going to try and hit that building. Alliance running over to get in position here. Manta trying to get the dodge off the Stormbolt. Still lands. There's the LSA follow-up as well. Oh, There's going to be Puppy with a charge in again, but Alliance. Always playing careful into that back line. They're going to be forced to use their glyph. That's another objective used. Another thing that Secret now doesn't have to worry about so much. Aegis has to be fading now, right? It is 45 seconds, so... And I can see why they're scared, because they can't just let Nisha suicide onto the barracks. Like, where he's going to be, the setup that's happening, especially with the break mechanic from Delina. He might just get bursted down a second life. <laughs> thought about, uh, thought about Bloodthorn. Now thinking about Refresher for the Templar Assassin for a double PKB. Really isn't much left. I'm double Hurricane Pike. Never seen that, but sure. Just keep piking yourself further and further. Just hit him from the mid lane. I mean, the Aegis is gone. If Team Secret were timid about going high ground before and, and finishing off these buildings... Nah, the Treads is gonna switch things up. Well, it's... Oh, it is the Treads. I thought he was gonna have the cheese in his inventory just in case. Another dagger. There's an approach on the high ground. This time they're gonna jump the Spectre with the Ice Blast going over the top of the back line. Puppy committing for mid but again, Alliance are far enough back that Seeker doesn't really want to commit to this. They're just gonna go for the buildings instead and try and get out with that AOE surge. He can actually jump back in onto Insania. He's trying to get into the trees right now. The Terrorize is gonna force him back out of those trees, though, and they do manage to kill the Spectre. And it's not in a fight where they can just buy back and she pops ultimate and goes in again. Seeker have already disengaged. Yeah, the double rapier makes us so awkward. It really does. You just don't want to do that. I, I feel like in a normal situation, you just continue the fight, but mid one's like, nah, I, uh, I'm good. Like every, uh, I'm good. And now he's like frantically switching up whatever his next item is. <laughs> he has no idea uh, what's going to be. Look at the bounty rune net worth difference. Yeah. 10,000 I mean, of the 48,000 net worth. This is the closest lead. 50k game I've seen because of this. Uh, this is why I don't even hate it. I, I'm not criticizing this at all. I think this is, this is one of the... 
you know, Dota is about entertainment, uh -huh. and I am thoroughly entertained because you have had to completely change how you behave in this game because of the double rapier. And it's glorious. <laughs> it is absolutely glorious, Kev. And they just keep on, the, the crazy thing is they keep on getting bounty runes, so they keep on getting more items. They keep on getting uh, opportunities for power runes, like the double damage they just grabbed at bottom. Yeah. And it's still, they've gotten, they also get the opportunity for Aegis, Cheese, Aghanim Scepter upgrades, Refresher Shards. All of these things are still not enough for Team Secret to confidently say, we can win the fight on the high ground. Uh, the cool thing too about Alliance's draft, and I guess Secret's, like both their drafts handle Mega's pretty fine. Yeah. Mega creeps do not really change that much. You have a bunch of cleave, a bunch of wave clear on both sides. Everyone's tanky enough to deal with it too. <laughs> Look at Yab story he's just uh I'm down. He's gonna get a I'm totally oh down. Oh my lord, what is this? Game? Get a divine raper, absolutely! Why You're attacking not? as often as this Templar Assassin, go for it. Why wouldn't you at this point? All right, so he's oh, going to go Silver Edge. Okay, no, he still has... He to still try has and break the Tidehunter, so Tide can no longer play the front line. Yeah. Which, uh, by the way, he had queued up a while back. I, yeah. I will let it be known. Um, before he decided to finish the Hurricane Pike, I recall. Mm -hmm. If I recall. Either he was getting it before the Hurricane Pike or before the Butterfly. One of the two major items that he purchased. Mm -hmm. it does go to show you he really wants that Pike. He could be... Why is it? Not sure. I, I would imagine the distance between him and the Sven matters quite a bit now, so that he can't get the Satanic kits off. Mm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Being able to reset himself after that too, I think yeah. is quite important for him. Just uh. I mean, the advantage for Team Secret, especially, is like they lost Spectre in the last, game. and we we put it out there. Just a single target haunt. Hey, what's up? Uh. We put it out there as like, oh, this big thing, and it was big because it means Alliance won the fight, but ultimately their game didn't change. They couldn't go outside their base and force the buyback out the Spectre. Maybe they went out there and farmed a little bit more than they were doing before, but they've if they want to actually change the fate of this game, they're going to have to take a fight outside their base somehow. Madara. He's going to push out while the rest of his team is smoked right now. Oh, man. Yep, sorry. It's real quick. They have a, a ward right on top of Puppy. Oh, look how fast that BKB was. It is committed, though, and I think that's going to make Secret reset for the time being. Yeah. Because you need Puppy to be able to just run. But it's not like Alliance are like... They, they can't be like, all right, 60 seconds. Let's go, boys. Let's go take a fight. Like, nope, they head right back to their base because they've got Creep Wave pushing in. And now all 10. Everybody's got buyback now. Yeah. We have come to full circle where everyone has buyback. We're still waiting on the uh, level 25 talents of both this AA. What's the max Ags? It's it's 17%. If he gets Aghanim Scepter on Ancient Apparition and the level 25 talent, 17%. 17% of your HP and you're dead. It's pretty big here as the Aegis. This is going to be a thing as Boxy. I mean, he's just hitting Ancients here. They're... This, is, uh... this is why Alliance smoked up. They wanted to be able to get into some sort of fight right, where they could fight over Zodiacs, Roshan, but... Right? I, I mean, I can't imagine a world in which you give it to a TA. Yes, yeah, yeah. Start giving it to the top. It's got it. Okay. Can now, you imagine if they gave it to him in one and he just started teleporting with his mouth? <laughs> that, that is not a good ax. I mean, <laughs> no. I mean, just soft roll that one out for you guys. I, 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 um, I like the change that Ice Frog did with this Aghanim Scepter of Roshan because it means you can have garbage Aghanims, you know? Because mm -hmm. it's like, eh, I mean, why not? Like, you're actually going to see those ags sometimes in games like these where... You're like, well, somebody's got to take it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> if this game goes another 10 minutes, you, you, you'll see it, guys. <laughs> uh, as we are at the 70 minute mark now, both teams, I mean, Alliance haven't seen outside their base for like 20 minutes. And for good reason, because every time they go, the, the win probability just chucks down a few. 
So they've been... Oh, that's that's the next step there for you, JJ. Oh, he does go for the 700 AOE cold feet, so he values the uh, the control over the It is really burst annoying damage. in two fights. Yeah. Just constantly throwing it out. As uh, Nisha, I mean, he's just kind of going for it now. He's going to uh, oh, peek in, just want to get the uh, brambles. <laughs> finding his way through the maze. He gets broken for a second there. Okay, no big deal. There's going to be Lord Star fast charge in from Puppy again. Always going for mid-gate. They do go for Nisha to try and jump on Alina as well. He jumps away. Out of his haunt. Back over to the building here with Zone Road's going to go out. Looks like Puppy's going to be dying here. Can they get Nisha though? Who runs into another bramble, trying to get his way through. Four staff through another one and does die. That is going to be his first life. They still have the God Strength up for Madara. So Alliance... Could feel okay at taking a fight right now, but Puppy's charging back in. in. They've got the top lane of Rax as well as bottom lane pushing in. They cannot afford to lose these buildings. Secret, they're still waiting outside. They know there's no ulti on the Sven. It's Nisha just gonna press forward. There is the Ravage available for them. And the A Ice Blast in five seconds. And those are probably a little bit more important at this point as Madara is gonna go deal with the top wave. Secret still sort of poking in and out, seeing what can be done, but looks like uh, the game is going to reset for them a little bit here with Puppy having to use that buyback. Thought there was an opportunity for him to just straight up end the game. Thirty-one to thirty-one. It's one of the rare times where we're going to tell you to ignore the net worth lead and pay more attention to the scores is indicative of kind of where this game in is. It's definitely not an even game, but it is not a long shot to say that Alliance could somehow make this comeback given what kind of crazy game this has been. I repeat myself and I'll say for the fourth time, this is the craziest, or this is the closest 50K net worth lead <laughs> uh, I've personally seen. I'm sure there have been other ones, but... Uh, no, I'm gonna say this has gotta be one of them. This has gotta be one of them. Didn't Cole throw like a 40K lead once or something? Yeah, but that's a... Uh, it's 40k. This is 50. I don't even know how 50 really happened. Is the we? You know what I mean? It just yeah. sort of. It just. It was. Yeah. It wasn't, and then it was. Well, while Team Secret have been able to pick up uh, somewhat useless Aghanim scepters for free, Alliance has had to do it the harder way, and finally we do have an Aghanim scepter for them. It's going to be on the Ancient Apparition. This is going to be. This next fight will be the first one that he has the extra kill threshold. That was his buyback, though. So they're yeah. going for the uh, locked and loaded one shot. I mean, his job's really easy because realistically, the only person you care about getting it on is that spec. This is actually one of the weirder AA games too, because you're so important. If you get it on the spec, great. If you don't, you lost the fight. Not too worried about it. I'm just wondering why he threw his ice blast outside. Just kind of looking around the, uh, the look around the area as much as possible. Just buy your rapier, Yapsor. You'll get the gold so, for buyback. So back. Nisha, dude, Nisha doesn't have a moonshot. He's got he's got ten thousand. He's got ten thousand gold in the bank. Midwan, who's been shopping for like his eighth and ninth items, also does not have. A Did moonshot. they just forget? Like. He just bought a blink dagger. Like he's actually just buying side item. The backup blink dagger. I I thought I was like, maybe Nisha is going to be giving out moon shards, but Dude, he doesn't even have become, one for himself. The game has become so confusing to everybody that uh, maybe they just genuinely. Oh well, he's going to buy Abyssal. Yeah. yeah okay, okay. That makes sense. Okay. That makes sense. And we're going to swap and it he in a for. Ten, he has a 10 second BKB. So he'll pop the 10 second BKB, or maybe he'll just drop the Radiance altogether. No one really seems to mind the Radiance too much. There's no Bleak yeah. Daggers aside from uh, Madara's. If he goes up into the high ground, pops his BKB and swings at the building. Can Alliance stop him? Can they threaten him enough not to finish up that one building? I think so. Uh, by the way, it's... It's a... Uh, there, there's three Blink Daggers. I should correct myself. But the one that's the most important is the Tidehunters for him to cancel. Yeah. But when you pop your ulti, it'll hit everybody anyways. So, uh, I mean, they've got two buildings. They've got both melee racks. I mean, given the, the huge chain stun that they have, they actually have an Aghanim Scepter now for the uh, the Dark Willow. So we're going to have that Shadow Realm constant hitting. Uh, but it, if he does get the Blink Ravage and you get the, the Terrorize, the, like, that's a huge AOE chain stun that could be happening if you're not fast enough in your BKBs. I bet this A wishes he sort of had the... I mean, he probably would have had the Axe otherwise, though. 
but the 10% spell on talent. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then the plus six ice vortex resistance. And you're really cooking. See, true leaders are thinking about the 76th minute of the game and are planning their talents accordingly. Come on, Insania. Come on. All right. Now you have to give, just by default, either this TA <laughs> or this IO the next. Who does have a rapier himself now. Yapsor has completed his. All right. There's another double damage rune. There's a DD. But the thing is, they keep giving it to the TA, but the TA is never the one hitting the buildings because he's got the divine rapier. Uh, he does a thousand to hit. He does a thousand to hit right now, and they're still. Like, if we saw for once mid one go and hit the building, it would drop so quickly. But. Yeah. I saw Yapsor uh, tether a creep when he was right next to mid one, and I got irrationally angry at him for a second. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry, I want you to fight. That was like me getting irrationally angry at Insania for throwing his ice blast yeah. outside of the base for a minute. Look, what are you doing? Keep this game going. All right, well, apparently Alliance is keeping themselves entertained. They're going to play the drums. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. The bongos have been laid out. Now, now the next test, you throw the monkey on the high ground when they go for the push. Guys, don't do this. This, uh... You need these. That was a nice melody. Dun, 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 dun. I like how Alliance just throws out all the chat wheel lines, kind of all in the same sort of area. You could tell, you know, it's like uh, the downsides of war, you know, it's like one of the things is like boredom. There's all this downtime. You got to keep yourself ready to go at any point, but you just naturally, you're going to get bored. And the Alliance are just like, they're just trying to keep themselves entertained. They're trying to make sure that their their guard is up for that big push that could be ending the game for them. But there has been pretty much 20 minutes of nothing. So the problem is Interspersed by like two, like 30 seconds of action. The problem with it is that everyone's six slotted. And if it's not enough for you to like end the game, it means that the game is just now neutral. The yeah. gold lead is just it's irrelevant at this point they, it, dota still thinks it's a 75 25 game despite the largest gold lead <laughs> i've ever seen it's actually going back up yeah, the it's... more aganim scepters <laughs> that are given to teams even secret. dota plus is like yo you really gave it wait, did wait get, you have an to aganim wish? scepter on upgrade on that's wish? gonna be two percent that, that's gonna be another two percent <laughs> the ta guess what it's a 50 50 game it's a sixty four thousand net worth lead now uh, it's so funny. If the TA gets one and then swings to like a 50-50, it's like, <laughs> we don't want you to get that. You shouldn't have done this. Hey, moon shards, there we go. Oh, okay, they, they started to, uh, let's get it. I, <laughs> you know, if you think about it in this way, it's a great position for Team Secret to be in for the series. Yes. Right, because you're wearing down Alliance with this really long, grueling <laughs> game. As long as you win it, as long as okay. you close it out. You know what, I think at one point, Secret, uh, because they're, are they in the upper bracket no matter what? I actually think this game still matters for them as the wild part. I think so too. Oh my lord. Smoke up from Team Secret. Oh my heart. 79 minutes, we've hit the point. You have an Aegis, right? You guys really aren't going to wait. You're not going to wait for the Moon Shard on Nisha. You've waited for so much. Zai just kind of running in, looking for the backing, and heads back out. Uh, there's, it's been 80 seconds, or uh, it's been 80 minutes now we are approaching. And we're in the top 10. Yapsor has a Aegis. <laughs> He's got a Rapier. He, uh, <laughs> I mean, guess the hero. It's, uh... You know, he's very strong. Oh, the Hans popped. Hans popped. They're going to go for it. Lena Lena. Trying to get him. They do have a force. They pull back them. in with the vacuum as best as possible. The nullifier. They might just be able to kill this hero. There goes the terrorized moderate set as well. The Both of them are going to have to buy back. The terrorized is down, but the uh, Dark Will is dead. She may have to buy back. There could be three coming out from Alliance, even if no buildings dropped. Team Secret have forced another win condition that they can wait on, I guess. Yes, as. Okay, Yapsor plus the TA destroyed Madara. Oh. He he popped his satanic and he died. That's what. That's it was how that much damage. It was. Like, did he get some swing? I was focused on Melina dying. Did he get any swings off? Uh, I think he got like one. And it just his big life steal didn't matter. Five hundred and sixty-three damage a hit <laughs> on 
just like a frenetic attack speed pace. Just get a moon shard on TA, please. Oh, is uh, mid ones gave up on the on the deso, right? He he traded that in a long time, so now Yapsor has got the deso for him. <laughs> That's high. Oh, they're actually gonna go outside the base. And, oh, there goes the specter. Okay, but they and gotta go top. They gotta go top. They gotta save their buildings. The building set. Can they actually catch any heroes here? The terrorize forcing the TA to split from Yapsor potentially. Tether back in to relocate him back over to bottom. There is another step. You force three buybacks. Now you are just one building away from Megas. I can't imagine Mega Creeps mattering at this point. That's true. It's been so long. That the Creeps are all Mega Creeps at this point. Isn't there a point in the game where, like, the regular Creeps start becoming stronger than the Mega uh, Creeps? Didn't they phase that out? Maybe I feel they, like did. they changed that, yeah. yeah. Dota wouldn't have something like that in it. Yeah. <laughs> Boxy just drew a line oh, down mid. There's like, like, what are now. They, they, they going to try and force the buyback out of the Spectre? Uh, I can't imagine I, they I do. Can't, I would, just can't I see think how... You would lose the game. Yeah. In open field, I think you lose the game as a lion. Backdoor protection doesn't even matter at this point. I think you could legitimately, if they try and go outside of the base, you can relocate onto that last building With and the TA, TA and, yeah. and, and Wiz could kill it. They would take it fast. There's still three minutes left on the glyph. I, I don't know if Secret does that, though. Uh, I think you just wait for your Spectre and just do the exact same play. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You're going to win this game. The game has been... It's kind of been solved. Yeah. You just need to not make any mistakes. Even small mistakes are fine. No no egregious errors. Uh, you can die in puppy and buy back as many times as you want. I mean, I everyone's going mad in this game. Like the Lions have just you know, they <laughs> for like two minutes straight they just like uh they made their own orchestra. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden they just like an explosion of violence. We uh, are at 78k, and uh, by the way, Tide is uh, trying to get a scythe. He's yeah. going to trade in his Vlads. The reason I know that is because the Vlads was picked up by Insania already. Okay. So now he has a Hex. So now they're ready to, to swap up some more what, items. Uh, what are we waiting on here? We, we're all 25 now. Yes. Yep. Uh, Insania's got his buyback. Nope. 680 gold. Realistically, it doesn't Even matter. the attack speed? But, but what about the the Ravage Terrorize come? I guess he thinks that uh, he's gonna boom boom boom. Realm realm realm. Gonna hit through that refraction fast. Maybe he's thinking real late game. Like eventually I'm gonna turn into a right clicker. And Everyone minute, is. And minute You're, 115. Awesome. They're not thinking about the late game. It's <laughs> <laughs> the late game was 30 minutes ago. Uh, this this shit's about as long as like Battlefield Earth the movie at this point. Like we've. <laughs> If you've committed to watching this game, like this is a this is a full, uh, full feature-length film at this point. There goes the Spectre Ultimate, but Mickey's not out of position. They're gonna try and get the vacuum in. They do have the science. They're going for Modern right the now. With the BKB, the God Strength. They do have the Terror right out with the Terrorist. But oh, Jesus, the Tide said so. It's been Mickey's gonna go down here. The Raptor goes down, actually saving Mickey. But they don't have a whole lot of damage, do they? Unless the leader can do enough. Darkseer gets a little bit low, but his knees should start charging forward. Mickey has to go back to the fountain here. That region, he definitely needs it, as they are going to be able to bring down another one. Darkseer, as well as the Spear Breaker, have bought back. That is going to be Megas, but the big tanks, Nisha, mid one, big damage dealers are still alive. They've got the melt back. Now Nisha gets on top of him with the no fire as well. No, he gets a four step back into the fountain. Are they going to die in the fountain? No, they're going to focus on the buildings. Go for their tier fours as best as possible. They should know. And at three versus five, there's no way Alliance can take them. They just shred the building so damn quickly. Boxy goes for the back line, tries with the scythe, but again, they just keep on running the damage deal with the only one that's left inside of Mickey, and they get him this time with the Mellow Fire. No fight back for him either. That is going to be Boxy dead inside of the fountain. Insania will be run down finally. Alliance will give up this game one as we 85 minute mark exactly. 87,000 gold. <laughs> we almost, we just hit the 85 minute mark. They look exhausted, by the way. If you saw Zai's expression right there, uh -huh. he just looks tired. Like, none of them even seem particularly happy. They just look <laughs> tired. Well, Alliance, you tried your best to hold on. You needed both of these wins. Unfortunately, this first game 